first thing that you want to do when you're making your mosaic is pick some tile. You can go online and specifically buy tile for mosaics. In hobby stores, you can find cut glass made for mosaics. But you might want to pick up things like pebbles made for gardening projects, or aquarium glass. Or you might want to scavenge tile from some of your old tile projects and cut it up. Or buy sheets of smaller tiles and pluck them off the netting. You can also buy sheet tiles and, and cut them apart. No matter what you pick for your design, it's likely that you're going to need to cut it or break it up into smaller pieces or irregular chunks. So let me show you a couple different ways that you can do that. The simplest way to break a larger ceramic tile into irregular shapes is just to put it on a hard surface, put on some eye protection, and give it a whack with a hammer. You can also go out and purchase a pair of tile nippers to cut up your tile. Now with tile nippers, you just work in small chunks depending on the thickness of your tile you can get some pretty regular triangles sometimes so the hammer method and this type of tile nipper are only for ceramic tiles if you are working with tiles that have a shiny coating or are made of glass, especially if they are made of glass, obviously you don't want to break glass with a hammer. You can use roller tile nippers to cut glass. They look like this. Of course, there's an infinite number of designs that you can come up with that don't require you to break up the tile at all. You can just use the geometry of the tiles to create something beautiful. The next step is to decide where you want to put your mosaic and measure the area. It's handy if the location is bounded by cabinets, the countertop, and walls, so the mosaic has a natural frame. If the area doesn't have a built-in frame, you might want to make one using some wood molding. When you're measuring, take the time to mark the location of the studs. Studs are placed about every 16 inches from the edge of the wall. To lay out your design, cut a sheet of wrapping paper with a grid on the back to the same dimensions as the mosaic area and mount it onto some stiff cardboard. This way you can easily move your design to your work area when it comes time to put the tiles on the wall. Draw your design with a marker and then fill it in with tiles. If you don't feel comfortable drawing your own design, outlines from coloring pages can help you. You can also stick with something abstract or find patterns in books available at your local library. Contrasting colors, sizes, and shapes of tiles can help to articulate and clarify elements in your design. You can see that I outlined my turtle with bright blue glass pieces to make it stand out. Remember, any place that there isn't tile, there'll be grout. So think about what color of grout will work best with your picture, and use those grout lines to accentuate your design too. step in our project is to cut a piece of backer board that will perfectly fit in the space where you want to put your tile. Backer board is partially made out of cement so it provides a really nice stiff surface. There won't be any flexion uh, in your tile that can cause breakage. It's also kind of rough so the mastic and tile will adhere to it nicely and it provides a moisture barrier. Whenever you're working with backer boards you're going to want to wear gloves to protect your hands. You're going to want to cut it outside because it will kick up a fine dust that will end up all over your house and cause quite a mess. You also don't want to breathe that fine dust in, so wear a mask that filters dust. And of course, wear eye protection. You can cut your backer board with a battery powered handsaw. Woo, look at the dust that comes off there. <laughs> uh, just like this one. So go ahead and cut your backer board to fit and we will install it. So I cut my backer board and you can see I've begun screwing it to my wall. 
I'm just using drywall screws, but they do make specialty screws for backer board. Set the head of your screw slightly below the surface of the backer board. If the screw head sits above the surface, it can prevent you from laying your tiles properly. They can pop right up where that screw is, so make sure they're sunk below the surface of the backer board. If you have drywall, you need to put your screws into the studs to get them to hold. My mosaic area is 48 inches by 12 inches and it's bounded on both sides by walls. So this means I have studs at the ends and at 16 and 32 inches. I marked my backer board accordingly beforehand and I'm gonna put four screws in the corners and then two more on each of those center studs. So eight all together. If you only have one stud behind your mosaic wall, then you could apply a construction adhesive to the backer board um, anywhere that it can't be mounted on the studs. Just make sure that there's no movement in your backer board and you let that construction adhesive dry for six to eight hours before you put any tile on it. If you need to draw your design onto your backer board to help guide you as you lay the tiles, you can always make patterns of your original drawing and trace it onto the board with a marker. Spread small amounts of tile adhesive, which is also called mastic, onto the wall with a putty knife and then press the tiles into the adhesive. You want the mastic to be just deep enough to set those tiles securely against the board, but not so deep that you get mounds of it between the individual tiles. If you do get some build up there, you can take a small flathead screwdriver and scrape it out. Um, you can also use a screwdriver to move individual tiles if they're not just where you want them. Small oil painting knives are handy for getting mastic into tiny places. You can also wear plastic gloves and spread the adhesive with your finger if necessary. Make sure if you're working with irregularly shaped tiles, um, like aquarium glass, that you find the flat spot of the individual tiles and press that against the wall. You don't want any of your tiles to rock or move. Once they're on the wall, they should set securely. Now it's time for the messy part of the project, grouting. Because I have some glass tiles in my mosaic, I'm using an unsanded grout. Sanded grout can scratch glass. There's no exact rule for mixing it. You simply add water and stir until it's about the consistency of toothpaste or a tiny bit thinner. Make sure that you mix your grout thoroughly. You don't want it to have big chunks of uh, dust inside it. How much grout you need will of course be determined by the size of your project, but you can always mix more. You'll definitely want to wear plastic gloves and wearing a mask isn't a bad idea either as grout dust isn't something you want to breathe in. For small amounts like we're using, it is okay just to stir slowly and avoid kicking up that dust. Make sure you have plenty of towels, sponges, and a large bucket of water for rinsing handy in your work area. Never rinse your grouting sponges or towels in your sink or tub. Grout will harden into little chunks of cement in your pipes and cause some serious problems. Although they do make tools called grout floats for applying grout, I found that an old dish sponge worked best for working that grout into the tiny spaces in my mosaic. Smear it all over the tile and just work it in gently with the sponge. Once you have worked the grout in, wipe off the excess on the top with the grout sponge. Rinse it out, wipe again. Let the grout dry now a little bit until a haze starts to form over the tile. Then wipe more vigorously until you get the surface looking fairly clear. You're gonna need to rinse your towels and sponges in that bucket often. And you might need to empty your bucket outside and get some fresh water. Once you get it as clean as you like, let that grout dry overnight. Then take a grout scrubber and remove any grout that's left on the surface of the tile. This process might take some effort and you can keep wetting and scrubbing until it looks the way you like. You might even use a wire brush. 
After scrubbing that mosaic thoroughly, let it dry for a day or two. The last step in the process is to apply a grout sealer. Just use a towel to wipe it all over the surface. It's going to protect your grout. It should dry for about three days before you touch the tile again. Now, enjoy your beautiful mosaic. Thanks so much for watching. If you're looking for more great resources on tiling or mosaics, visit JCPL online at www.jesspublive.org.